This graph was created to explain the growth of the coronavirus by putting it in perspective against the swine flu, MERS, Ebola, so on and so forth. But in reality, it's not about the coronavirus. This graph can be thought of as relating to any pandemic. It easily explains how viruses can grow and spread in the global village that we all live in. It is important to be aware and concerned about these things, but not panicky. As we look at this 90 days out, we can see that the coronavirus, aka COVID-19, is a big deal. But if we let the timeline continue to run, you see that the swine flu, which was something that I remember people not taking as seriously as SARS and MERS, probably because the swine flu stayed centered in China, became a much bigger deal. These public health emergencies can easily be related to grade three math. It's all about the denominator. And that means it's all about the number of people who were infected. The Spanish flu killed about 1% of those infected, but that was a very large percentage of the globe. Contrast that with MERS, which killed about 10% of people infected, but again stayed centered largely in China. MERS was locked down fairly early and did not get to be the global pandemic most of us had feared. So far, COVID-19, aka the coronavirus, or Wuhan virus, has been killing about 2% of people infected, according to official CDC uh, reports, and uh, not just the Chinese government. However, because it is estimated that only about 50% of the people infected with the coronavirus had any sort of meaningful symptoms, they're not likely to get tested, and so they're not likely to be included in the official statistics, which means it's quite likely that the coronavirus is killing only about half of the number of people we think it is, in percentage terms. That puts it at about 1%, which is similar to the Spanish flu. Pandemics and all other emergencies will come and go, but the lessons uh, learned will stay, hopefully. It is clear that while China has been draconian in some of its measures to contain this outbreak by quarantining the largest number of people in human history and by sealing up infected residential buildings, going so far as to weld doors shut to seal those people living in infected buildings. However, the rest of the world will benefit from these Chinese measures if we learn from our history, reduce travel, reduce social interaction, invoke quarantines, even self-quarantine and stay rational during the inevitable future pandemics. We'd like to thank our sister site, URtech.ca, for letting us use their YouTube channel to expose some of the facts related to this global pandemic. And we wanted to take the time to ask you to visit partisanissues.com if you're interested in a nonpartisan, objective view of the facts relating to China, energy, technology, and some legislation. We really try to stay out of the political opinion business that so dominates and poisons the world of interaction we live in today.